Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about generation 2, this is generation 1, and this is generation 2, cages for the raven. But before we do that, let's fire it up. Yeah! Alrighty. So some of the differences between Gen 1 and Gen 2 of the cage is we have, the obvious one, is we have added the much improved dart guide. Um, the original one you can actually, would actually catch the dart sometimes on the back and obviously it wasn't a particularly good dart guide. The original one, the darts could still sometimes pop out. So with a long one it is much better. There is some debate about how central that is. As far as I can tell, the magazine is actually not central, but anyway. The other big change we've made is that in Gen 1, the motors actually just kind of sat in this little recess, and they were just held on by screws. Now the problem with that is that it meant that all of the, the force acting on the dart to push the motors apart uh, was acting on, obviously, the motor and its screws. And the screws, this is not actually the right screw, has a thread. And that thread would just sort of cut into the plastic and move away. And frankly, it's only half of the width of that anyway, which meant that it would slowly move away because, of course, it gets a bit warm. So in Generation 2, we've encapsulated it with this ring here. That means that you theoretically don't even need any any screws at all, but obviously that's not true. Put screws in it. And so that there goes in like that, and you have to push it in to get it in. Which I can't do because you normally have to put it on the table and use the wheel to push it down. Well, at least that's the way I do it. But that means that all this red aluminium on the side of the motor is now pushing against the inside of the cage so when that force gets applied it, it's much harder to actually just deflect or, or bend or slowly move over time away from it. We have also changed the wheels which is a big change. Now these are not actually the Raven wheels, this is the Strife wheels and therefore these have this little cutout but the Raven ones don't and Raven wheels are different to Strife ones uh, because of that and also this is slightly narrower on the strife because of the the supports that stick out but we've changed the holes we've gone from this white one to this black one more holes much less holes bigger but it means that when you try to uh, assemble this thing it was very hard to assemble this because sometimes the wheel would actually turn and so you could never do the nut up because you couldn't hold it because the white part, and this is an example, see how this one spins on here, which it shouldn't do. This is a bad print. But I mean, it was impossible to do the nut up because you couldn't stop it from moving. So with these new ones, these are a bit smaller, so they should actually fit like this one does. And it means you can then stick a screwdriver down there, which that's not a screwdriver or an Allen key. I use Allen keys. And then I can do the, up the nut if I can ever find it. Who knows if this is the right nut for the right motor. I do, and for some reason I always manage to magically pick up the counterclockwise ones. So you can hold Gemini with two of those, and you can do it up against this. And this is obviously pushing against the frame. So that pushes up against these here. So the idea is you line these holes up with obviously the vent holes. And I have done other alignments, other changes, but that's pretty much it. This particular strife is shooting 4S. It's not a strife, it's a raven, isn't it? Uh, also remember to use thread lock because they do tend to vibrate loose. This one here is using a potentiometer or a pot to adjust the RPM. 
So let's have a bit of a play with that. Now that was the most requested addition to the project. I think it's really useful for people that are restricted to a certain FPS. Uh, the mod that I've been doing is relatively useless. They're like, oh, I don't care, I can't do plus 200 FPS or whatever. I'm limited to 130 or 150 shooting some specific kind of darts. So you can now, obviously, no matter what dart they select, you can adjust this RPM to get exactly the right limit. Now, I, this one is obviously never going to be legal because you've got a knob on the outside, so pff, whatever, you could just change that. So I don't have problems with limits, so I just put an external knob on for basically kid-friendly or not. However, if you were into a restricted battle, I would suggest you could put a multi-turn trim pot, which is much smaller than this, you could put it in the original battery bay, or you could even put it in the shell where you can't access it during the battle, you'd have to unscrew it, and if it's like the Raven, you've got 50 million screws. So that could enable you to adjust the RPM to be exactly on the limit, no matter what the dart is, and if you go to different events with different limits, you can adjust their pot for that, or which is really useful, because I'm sure you have plenty of mucking around at home where there is no limit, but you might be stuck at this 130 limit, or I think there's a 150 limit. It may even be 100, I think there's 100 for schools in America somewhere. So you can adjust that every day for whatever you want, which will be far easier than, well, than what I've seen other people trying to do. Especially if you did, were able just to put it in the original battery box, because I don't use that, I've got a, another battery on there. But that is where I decided to put it. I put it there just because it's closer from the wiring point of view. All right, need to give it some love. And for some of you may have noticed, it no longer rattles badly, which was from my original mod video. Uh, that's basically because the wheels were horribly out of balance, and I've managed to slowly improve my ability to print round and in-balance wheels. That's probably because I have printed one trillion of them. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, everything is obviously free download, and the wiring, including the pot, is up there, but I was going to do an additional video on the pot. On, yeah, on the pot on how to add that and how to remove that which I will do in a few days well probably not actually could have already happened another thing worth mentioning I guess is that I do have different wheels that you can use now you can uh, print different compressions. I've got up to uh, 7.9 now, which is a higher crush than the 9.1s I originally started with. Uh, the reason for the 9.1s is I got over 200 and thought, hey, better not change it. But I have now <laughs> increased that crush. It scares people. It's awesome, Naz and Naz. Alright guys, uh, subscribe if you like, subscribe if you don't like, and we need to remember there is a Facebook page, which I always forget about, and there's quite a lot of discussion and help going on how to improve it and what not on there, so join that. Alright guys, see you on the next one. Bye bye.